Something's happening. Flip over to Nahum chapter 1. We're going to look at a verse real quick. So getting this message ready, I was all excited about it. I wrote down some stuff and I did my message. And we get ready to have some family time after church this morning. And, and we went out and walked the dog and it had a good little time. And I get back and I go to print my message. And we're trying to get the kids ready for church. And half my message is printed. So, and it wasn't the part that I, that I didn't need, you know, with all the stuff. It was the, the part with, like, the last little bit, how to end my, my message. So I quickly wrote down on a couple of pieces of, on a paper of some verses. And we're going to kind of wing it. But God put on my heart about troubles. You know, each and every person in this room goes through troubles. Can I tell you something? We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for people before there's a problem. Can I tell you something else? There's people sitting in this church right now that have a storm brewing that we don't know anything about. Can I tell you, my family just came out of a storm uh, just recently. Uh, we uh, hadn't said anything, just shared with Pastor uh, Brooks and asked them to just kind of pray about it, be quiet. We weren't sure what was going on. About a month ago, Sarah found a lump on her breast. We didn't tell our kids. We don't know what's going on. And all we know is believe and trust God. Believe and trust God. Can I tell you something? That's easier said than done. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 says this. Says this. We have do- Oh, nope, that's not the verse I want. Ooh, I'm in Nehemiah. It would be helpful if I was in the right book. We will uh, actually skip that verse because I'm nervous now. But we'll go back to the trial. The trials that we have, you know, we don't know when they're going to come. All we know is how to be grounded in God's word and continue to do what he, what he asks us to do. If you flip over to Psalms chapter 9, verse 9, we'll go there. I, I'm familiar with that verse. I'm not going to get nervous on that one. Uh, 9, 9, it says this. The Lord also will be our refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in a time of, a time of trouble. You know, it's easy to say those things when it's somebody else is having the problem. It's easy to put those verses in a card and send it and say, hey, man, I'm praying for you. But it's a lot harder when those, when those problems come your way. Can I tell you something? I love Joey Corbin's family. Love them. Good people. I pray for the, the littlest one to his dad. Can I tell you something? They all need our prayers. But there's people that are going through struggles that we don't even see, like Joey Corbin's family. And we need to continue to pray for everybody in our church. I, I challenged you guys in the last Sunday school. This was your side of the church, you know, building. You guys need to mentor, you know, mentor and go out and challenge to recruit them and get them back in the fold. This is your side of the building. You need to know these people. You need to pray for them daily. The center part, this is your, your part of the building. You guys need to know the people. You need to know them, name them by name, and pray for them. You never know what's going on. Brother Paul, this is your side of the building. This is your area to be praying for. And, you know, we, we, we think about it, and why do we pray? Prayer enlists the hand of God. Prayer enlists the hand of God. Do I know why? Do I know why things happen? No. But can I tell you something? Things happen because God allows them to happen. Flip on over to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And it says this, Job chapter 1, verses 5 through 11, it says this. And it was so when the day of their fasting were gone about that Job sent and, sent and sacrificed them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of, of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and accursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job, in now there was days when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. Notice that Satan answers the Lord. And Satan said, From going to and fro the in the earth and walking up and down. So he says he's, he's walking around. He's walking around. He answers to the Lord. He's walking around. 
And he says this, he says this, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that he is not like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one fear, feareth God, and excuse evil. Hey, this is a godly man. Consider Job. Hey, hey, this trial is about to come in Job's life. God let it be. Can I tell you something? These trials that we have, God lets them happen. Can I tell you, it doesn't make it any easier. It didn't make it any easier when we're waiting in limo, a limbo of what was going to happen. You know, we, we sit there and we have discussions. We go for walks, get away from the kids with the dogs, and what do we do? Well, we've always been faithful to God. We're just going to be faithful to God. Well, you know, should we worry about it? No, we're just going to pray. We don't know the outcome, but we're going to be faithful to God. Continue on. Do your soul winning. Do your Bible reading. Do your devotions. Just continue on. Can I tell you something? I'm not going to lie. It's always in the back of my head. What if this is not going to be a good outcome? It's all right. It's the Lord's will. Can I tell you something? Job never, ever imagined the loss that he was going to have. Never imagined. But the Lord blessed him for his faithfulness. Can I tell you something? Sometimes the trials that we have are not the ones we want, but they're the ones that God gives us to prove our faith. Can I tell you something? The only thing we can do in a trial is depend on God. The only thing we can do. Can I tell you something else? When trials come, the last thing we need to be doing is questioning God why they're happening. Can I tell you something? Uh, I'm so thankful that it, it was not cancer. Can I tell you something else? It made me respect the fact that God could change my whole family in a blink of an eye. You know, that outcome, that outcome would have changed everything for us. Can I tell you something else? It also let me realize, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'm not as personable as I should be. Can I tell you, can I, can I just say this? When you realize that you could have something happen just like that and it changes your life, it makes you open up your eyes to other people around you and see, Man, I, I really, really dropped the ball on, on being involved in each and every person's life. Can I tell you something? The, the hardest thing about not knowing something and not knowing the outcome is you know that you're out, completely out of control. Can I tell you something else? It's a blessing to know that we have a Savior that cares enough about us that we can go to him in prayer and he hears our prayers. Flip on over to 2 Kings real quick. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 20. Okay. We get to see Hezekiah. We get to see a trial coming. And he does exactly what we should do when there's a trial. Hezekiah, we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter, uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet, prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Hey, this is not good news. This is God saying this. Get your house in order. Get things right. I really wish that he had more modern names. That, that name, I know I butchered it. But, you know, uh, I can't help that. Uh, when we look at the Bible, but we do see this, is Hezekiah was sick. There was trouble coming. And, and he hears the words that he's going to die. He gets told to get his house in order. Now watch how Hezekiah responds back. This is how we need to respond back. Verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. He prayed unto the Lord. He didn't tuck tail and run, he didn't cry, he didn't whine, he didn't go try to find another alternative, he went right to the Lord. And what does it say here? And it says, on verse 2, it says this, it, it, he says, prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech you, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee. Hey, remember, I'm yours, Lord. Hey, remember, I'm yours. Hey, you know what? When we go to, go to the Lord in prayer, it's not... It's not a problem to tell them, hey, remember, I'm yours. Remember, I'm your servant. Remember, I love you. Remember, I want to be used by you. Hey, remember, Lord, I'm yours. We go down here and he, he, we see here this. He says, I beseech you, beseech you that they, O oh Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with perfect heart 
and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept. He wept. Can I tell you something? Sometimes when we're as broken as we can be, when we come to the Lord and we just let it out, when we just let it out, it's us telling the Lord, your Lord, whatever it is, it's all right. Whatever it is, it's all right. You know what? Hezekiah, is, he, he's at a point where there's only hope in one person. The only hope is in the Lord. Can I tell you something? Sometimes it comes a trial. It comes something that tests our faith to the point that we realize all that we have is the Lord. You know, I know Brother Joey's dad is going through a trial. I know that Brother Joey appreciates the prayers, and I know that Brother Joey is, is, is doing the best he can. But we need to be praying for everybody in that family. We need to be praying for the littlest one all the way up to dad because they're all suffering from it. Can I tell you something else? We ought to be fasting for, for Brother Joey's dad. We ought to be having times of prayer in our household for, for people like Brother Joey's dad. Can I tell you something else? We also need to realize that we are, we're all sensitive and we don't like to share information. Can I tell you something? My wife did not want me sharing that information. I, I felt that it was best for her to talk to Miss Karen, Mrs. Brooks. She talked to her and she had somebody to talk to. Can I tell you something? Not only do we need to pray for people not knowing, but we need to be open enough and caring enough that somebody would seek you out to be confident enough to tell you something that's big and not be a blabbermouth and squeal it. Can I tell you something? It was a blessing to have Mrs. Brooks be a pillar where she could go talk to and not worry about it getting out. Can I tell you something else? She was under stress, my wife was, because we have children. We don't want to stress out our children on something we don't know about. It was a blessing to have this church. It's a blessing to have people that I know that pray and care for my family. Can I tell you something? It still doesn't change the storm. It doesn't, still doesn't change the trial. You know, uh, men, men are a little bit different than women. Uh, if, you, if you don't know, sometimes uh, I, I would say we, we tend to want to bulldoze through things and just get it done. But there's certain times that even if we have that mentality, we can't do anything. You know how, how, how hard of a feeling it is to realize there ain't nothing I can do. If, if the situation is the ultimate worst, there's nothing I can do. Right. If, if the situation is not too bad, there's nothing I can do. All I can do is pray. Right. Hezekiah, what did he do? He prayed. We go down just a little bit more. I'm four. It says, and it came to pass after Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, oh man, Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Look at that. Hang on right there. He heard th thy prayer. The situation was so dire, he was told he was going to die. The situation was so dire, go get your house in order. The situation was so dire that he knew the only hope he had was God. Yet God hear, hears him. When our situations are so dire that there is no hope, there is hope in God. There is hope in God. Go on just a little bit more. And we see this. And he says, I've seen thy tears. So he sees you weeping. He sees him weeping. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto you the, thy days 15 years. Hang on. This guy went from having, being told, hey, there's no hope. You're done. Get your house in order. It's over. To breaking down, praying, breaking down in tears, knowing that there was only one person that could answer his prayers, only one person that could change this outcome, and it was the Lord. And guess what? The Lord heard him. You know, we sit here today and, and, and we, we wonder what can we do. The only thing I know how to do is pray. Pray and be faithful. Pray and be faithful. You know what, Brother uh, Paul? If the outcome would have been different, if the outcome would have been the worst outcome, I'm still going to pray and be faithful. Why? Because the Lord's still the Lord. He's still good. 
you know what? The outcome may not have been what we wanted if that was the outcome, but we still have victory. Why? Because I know my wife would be in heaven if she died. I, still have, I would still have three little ones to raise up for the Lord and raise them right. Can I tell you something? I, I can't do that if I shun God and, and turn away. Can I tell you something? The more I grow closer to the Lord, the more I spend time with my family, the more I see growth in Rachel. Can I tell you something else? I, I truly love Pastor Brooks. I love Pastor Brooks. When we came here, we came here right from Bible college. Uh, I was too busy, too busy, working full time, doing ministry full time, knocking doors, doing bus ministry. Uh, Jessica was at Bible college. She knows that uh, uh, I was doing like six to eight hours of knocking on Saturdays after coming off of work in third shift, not, wor- not sleeping for like 30 hours. I was seeing like colors that weren't there. And no, I wasn't in bald knob doing drugs, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, stress. I mean, stress, no sleep, chest pains, can't breathe. And, and you know what? We get here, and I'm like, I got to come. I got to settle down, and I need to have some tutelage from a godly man. I got it from Brother Brooks. Can I tell you something? I need to slow down for my family. That young girl right there, when we got here, very stubborn. Didn't talk. Uh, really did not want to have anything to do with anything. Can I tell you something? It was sitting down reading my Bible, praying for my daughter over and over again, spending time doing things I really don't want to do. Can I tell you something, men? I'm just going to say this. I really don't like pottery, but I love my daughter. So we went and sat down and did pottery. Very first time I sat down and did pottery. And I'm sitting down and and, you know, we were so distant, there, there was no talking. Was no talking. It was the most awkward. I think she didn't want to be there. And I'm just like, well, Lord, you, I, I love my daughter. I'm going to do this, but this ain't working. To the point now, whenever I go out the door for work, I get a hug. I love you, Dad. Why? Because brought up with the Bible. Was around a preacher that prays for us. Around people that teach you the right way. Can I tell you something? Our kids, no matter what the trials are, no matter what's going on, if we, if we let a, a storm come in and turn us away from the Lord, not only do we hurt our walk, but we're hurting our families. Brother Jonathan, you have a bunch of children. I loved knocking with them the other day. And uh, we were having a good time. Trial comes, you got to stay put, man. Megan, trial comes. It's not going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. You have the Lord, you have this church. I really don't get, I really, really, really don't get people that run away from God and run away from the church. Can I tell you something? I I pray for each and every one of you all the time. Ma'am in the back, I say, I don't remember your name, but I always pray the lady with the gray hair that sits with the Smiths. (laughs) Sorry. God knows. But can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? We need to be praying for each and every one of us. We, I pray for Brother Connor probably two, three times a day when I know he's on the road. Amen. Can I tell you something else? We need to be praying for everybody like that. Yes. Can I tell you something else? We need to get back to, to having our small groups and having prayer. That's where the power is with the Lord. That's how we have revival. That's how we get... Big accomplishments done is we get God involved and the hand of the Lord moves and things happen. Hezekiah prayed to the Lord and the hand of God moved and he got 15 more years. 15 more years. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we don't see what we want to see happen because we don't go to the Lord and persuade him to do something. Can I tell you something else? It's not the Lord's fault that he doesn't do things when the Lord's people don't pray. These altars are always open. Can I tell you something? Pastor and nobody here is looking to see who, the, who, who got conflicted with the message. We're just happy that somebody got touched by the message and the Lord's working on them. Can I tell you something else? 
If you're sitting there and you notice somebody that's going up there, you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong. This is a special place right here, right there. And we need to treat it like a special place. Hezekiah, Hezekiah, we see here, he got 15 years. And I will deliver thee and, and this city out of the hands of the king of Assyria. So not only does he get 15 years, but he gets a victory. He gets to see Syria come out of captivity. Watch this. Here we go some more. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he received it. Hey. Hey. God is not done yet. God can heal. God can correct anything that is overwhelming, but we need to petition him. Can I tell you something? Our desire should not be to run out of here and hide from God. Our desire should be to run into here and seek God. That's, that's the end of my message. You guys are going to get out of here way early. Ice cream, good times, kids to bed if you're at my house. But can I tell you something? Please, 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 please start praying for people. Don't wait till we have to hear that it's a, a cancer or it's a, a, a heart attack or something else. We need to start praying for our people way beforehand. With that, I'm going to ask Brother Joey Corbett to close us out in prayer.